أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القران العظيم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعص ان الانسان لا في خص الا الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر صدق الله العظيم all praises are for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we glorify him and we thank him for his blessings and favors upon us I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah. He is alone and he has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his servant and final messenger. Ibadallah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by time. And he reminds us that people are in a state of loss. He says in the Quran, Walas, by the token of time, in al insan la fi khus, verily man is in a state of loss. Time comes and time goes. People do not know how long their time, their allotted time is. There are some who make use of their time and there are others who procrastinate and time just moves away from them in that they, they don't grasp the opportunities that come with the time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a, an exception here in the Qur'an where he reminds us that not everyone is in that same state. Not everyone falls into the same, into that one category. That we, we don't bulk them together. He says, In al insan la fi khus, verily man is in a state of loss. Illa ladina amanu wa amilu salihat. Watawasaw bil haq, watawasaw bil sab. And here comes the istisna or the exception. Allah, He says, accept those who believe and do righteous deeds. Those who recommend one another to the truth and to patience. And so these are the ones who really make use of time. 
These are the ones who look for opportunities to better themselves and look for opportunities to bring betterment to others. Except those who, he says, except those who believe they have faith. And how is it that we strengthen our faith? We just don't say we believe, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you believe and you also demonstrate that faith. So, by the doing of good deeds, you also make sure that your faith is being exemplified, it is being demonstrated that your faith becomes stronger. It is said that Al Iman Yazid wa Yanqus. Iman increases with good deeds and it decreases when we involve ourselves in wrongdoing. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that we are in a different category from all the others who are in a state of loss. The believers, the ones who believe and they do righteous deeds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also reminds us that you try to make the environment in which you live, you try to make the lives of other people better. And so you recommend one another, or you recommend others towards, you recommend others towards the truth, to be truthful in everything about their life. And you recommend people to have patience that there will be challenges and there will be difficulties in life but we must not give up hope and we must not at any time lose faith in our Creator in which we, we decrease our Iman. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us every moment of our lives to discipline and to train ourselves. When we discipline and we train ourselves, we are paving our way towards success. When we are an indisciplined bunch and we have no demonstrate no type of training and we do things just however we wish to do it, we do not look at the laws of Allah and the Sunnah of His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then we are paving our way towards failure. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in the Qur'an, قَدْ أَفْلَهَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Successful is the one who purifies his soul, purifies himself. And the one who corrupts his soul, he is doomed to failure. How do we stay pure? How do we discipline ourselves and on what basis do we discipline ourselves? What is the training that we ought to have? Everyone wants Jannah. Everyone wants paradise. And so, the discipline, the training is in the book of Allah 
and in the sunnah of his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Taraktu fikum ma in tamasaktum bihi lan tadillu min ba'di kitab Allah wa sunnati. Aw kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I leave with you two things. If you follow them, you will be disciplined. You will have the right training. You will stay pure. You will stay on the right path. What are these two things? The book of Allah and my traditions or the traditions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, with regards to paradise, this Jannah, Kullukum yadkhulul Jannah illa man aba. Every one of you will enter paradise except the one who refuses paradise. And so the companions, they asked, Wa man ya aba ya Rasulullah? And who will refuse paradise or Rasulullah? Who will refuse paradise? It's something that they could not comprehend. Why would people want to refuse paradise? And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man ata'ani dakhla al-jannah, wa man asani faqad aba. The one who obeys me, and when we obey, we, we keep ourselves within a certain area of discipline. We, 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 we have the proper training when we obey Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, when you obey me, then you are paving your way towards paradise. You want paradise. When you disobey me, then you have refused entrance into paradise. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, every day we are given opportunities to stay pure. Every day we are given opportunities to make sure that life is lived on the right path. And there are obstacles, there are thorns, there are challenges that if we are not careful, then we move to the wrong path. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Kullun nas Yaghdu Fabai'un nafsahu Famu'atiquha Awmubiquha The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said All people, all of us We go out early in the morning and here the word is being used, we go out early in the morning selling ourselves. People go out in the morning selling themselves. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, thereby setting themselves free or destroying themselves. You can either use whatever you see, whatever is available to become free souls, to become pure souls. Or you can use whatever you see, whatever is available, whatever is in front of your eyes to destroy yourselves and so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is advising us be careful this world is full of distractions 
this world you have a lot of vanities you have many things that if you look at it in the right way it can bring you closer to your creator and if you look at it in the wrong way you you look to accomplish something else out of what is presents itself every day to you then you can move away from your connection with your creator and so people every day every morning you wake up you have that opportunity to stay connected with your creator or to be disconnected from your creator and so my dear brothers and my dear sisters we need to make sure that we spend time in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we spend the moments that Allah has given to us to always remember our Creator because when we remember Him and stay connected with Him life is worth living when we disconnect from Him and we just look at the luxuries of this life we look at the beautification of this life and what uh, is there in this world there that tendency to move away from the connection with our Lord Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said the likeness of the one who remembers Allah and the one who does not remember Allah is like the living and the dead so when you remember Allah and you stay connected you have life life is worth living when you disconnect don't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's like life doesn't have any meaning it's not worth living and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us in the Quran that there are times in your lives when you will make mistakes but always remember to do good things constantly because your good deeds help to wipe away the evil or the mistakes that you have made Allah reminds us in the Quran about uh, prayers and always stay connected with him through our prayers he says in the Quran وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ طَرَفِ النَّهَارِ was zulafan min al layl in al hasanat yudhibna sayyat dhalika dhikra lil dhakirin allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the quran and perform prayers at the two ends of the day and in some hours of the night perform prayers at the two ends of the day and at some parts of the night and he says verily good deeds wipe away evil deeds and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and he said ذَلِكَ ذِكْرَ لِذَّاكِرِينَ that in it is 
reminder for those who want to be reminded. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, prayers, it helps us to stay connected with our Creator. And so every opportunity that we have, we need to make sure that there is that constant connection with Allah through our prayers. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us, Kullu bani adam khatta wa khayral khattain at-tawwabun. Every son of Adam makes mistakes. And the best of those who make mistakes are the ones who turn to Allah and they seek forgiveness for their mistakes. So, bow down. Pray. If we look at the connection, Allah mentions salah, wa aqimis salah. And then he says, إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْحِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ Verily, good deeds wipe away evil deeds. You see the, the connection? That salah is so important. Allah joins it with the doing of good. And how it helps to remove the wrongs that you have done in your lives. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, if we look at a saying of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is a good recipe that we ought to live life by and you might have heard it so many times but as Allah says in the Quran reminders are good for the believers Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says ittaqillah haythu ma kunt be dutiful unto your Lord wherever you may be, whatever the circumstances may be. People sometimes only think about their Creator when they are in difficulties and they're facing challenges. When everything is okay, people disconnect from their Lord. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, fear Allah, perform your duties, whether you are rich or whether you are poor, you are strong or you are weak, you are traveling or you are at home, you are educated or you are uneducated, you have time or you don't have time. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. Always be dutiful. Carry out your duties to your Lord. Fear Allah under all circumstances. And then he says, وَاتَّبِعَ السَّيِّئَ الْحَسَنَ تَمْهُهَا Life is such that there will be many thorns in your pathway. And sometimes you are not able to defend yourself or to keep yourself from being pricked by the thorn. Life is such that there are times when you will make mistakes. And so do not magnify your mistakes. Do not make them larger. But every time you make a mistake, 
always try to do something good. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says it wipes it away. It wipes the mistake away. And then he said, "Wa khaliqin nas bi khuluqin hasan," and always treat people well. We live in a world, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, where people sometimes do not care about others. They do not care as to how much they hurt their feelings or they, they deprive them from the basic necessities of life. They do not care as to how they, they interact with them, what harm they bring to them. Islam teaches us that part of our Iman is to even remove from the pathway something that we see that will harm others. And so Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that you always strive to treat people well, treat people the way you would like to be treated. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, opportunities are there for us to keep ourselves pure. Opportunities are there for us to make sure that the rust that are sometimes on the hearts of people do not increase. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he tells us in a beautiful hadith he talks about the believer and he says inna al mu'mina إذا أذنب ذنبا كانت نقطة سوداء في قلبه. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, when a believer does something wrong, a black spot is registered on his heart. نقطة سوداء. He says a black spot is registered on the heart. If he is sorry, he repents, that black spot is being removed. If he feels that he hasn't done anything wrong, he's okay with what he has done, then that nukta remains, and every time he does something wrong, another black spot is registered. And then his heart becomes engulfed with black spots. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us in the Quran, Kalla bal rana ala qulubihim ma kanu yaksibun. Nay, but on their hearts is the ran, the covering of sins and evil deeds which they used to earn. That's the ran that Allah is mentioning in the Quran. You do wrong and you do not feel that you have to ask for forgiveness or to repent. And so black spots are registered on the heart. And every time more and more wrong, more and more black spot, that's a heart that be becomes very disconnected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a heart that is engulfed with evil deeds and evil uh, and sins. And that's what Allah describes in the Qur'an as being the ran. Kalla bal rana ala qulubihim 
مَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ That's the run, that's the evil that they used to earn. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, let us strive to make sure that we use the opportunities that present themselves every day when we wake up and we walk out of our homes, that those opportunities are opportunities that will keep us connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, the, the beautification and all the luxuries of this world will not destroy us and keep us away from our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullah wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat lighad. O you who believe, fear Allah and always look to what you are preparing for the morrow. Life in this world is not everlasting. It's not eternal. We will leave this world when none of us know. And so we always need to be prepared. Use every opportunity that Allah gives to us to make sure that we stay connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may he save us from the torment of hellfire. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa li sa'ir al-mu'min al-mu'minat min kulli dhamb. Fa astaghfirun. Innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رضوان الله عليهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد my dear brothers and my dear sisters in order to keep ourselves pure in order to to ensure that we have success we are being reminded of four things. One, that we must always have this concept of tawbah, that we always want to repent, to ask for forgiveness. Secondly, we always need to have this concept of muraqaba, that Allah is ever watchful, Allah knows everything that we do. In Allah kana alaykum raqiba. Verily, Allah is ever watching over you, you. Allah knows everything that you do, whether you reveal it or you conceal it, whether it's small, it, minor or major, Allah knows everything. So every time you think about doing something, think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing what you're about to do. And do as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he taught us in that beautiful hadith that we should worship Allah. He says, أَن تَعَبُدُ اللَّهِ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكُ Worship Allah in such a way as if you see him. And even though you cannot see him, understand that Allah sees and he knows everything that you do. The third thing, the concept of muhasaba, always take into account everything that you do. Whether it's, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you're coming into a new year, you're coming into a new era, you're celebrating some achievement in life, just look back. Take into account what you have done and try to make sure that there's always betterment. And the fourth thing, or the fourth concept that we ought to look at is the concept of mujahada, that we need to always make sure that we are struggling and we are striving to keep ourselves on the right path. When we do that, when we struggle and we strive, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
he helps us. He says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِيْنَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهُ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And those who struggle, those who strive in our path, we will certainly guide them to the, the right path. We will keep them on the straight path. And verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is with those who do righteous deeds, those who are muhsineen, those who are people of good, people who are doing good in their lives. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, it is never, it is never for us to say, oh, I have done enough. I am doing a lot. You always have to strive to do more. Look at Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to pray at night until his feet were swollen with one ayah, contemplating on one ayah of the Quran. And when he was asked, why do you do this, Ya Rasulullah, when your anything that you have done in the past wrong, you have been forgiven for it, and whatever you will do in the future wrong, you are also forgiven for it. And he used to say, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say, Afala uhibbu an akuna abdan shakura. Shouldn't I love to be a thankful servant? And that's the way he showed his gratitude and his thanks to his creator, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He strived to do more. He struggled to do more. So never be content with your present status. Try to be more connected with Allah. Try to do more for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لقد أمرنا الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن العظيم حيث قال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى الله من خلفائه الأربعة أبي بكر وأمر وثمان وعليم ونستة الباقين المبشرين بالجنة وانسائر الصحابة ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بسان لا يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على دين الإسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم عباد الله إن الله يمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباقي ذلكم لا تذكرون فاذكروا الله على نعمه واشكروه على آلائه ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنون أقم الصلاة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر